Hello booktube and welcome back. This is part two of my top, actually turns out to be top 30 explorers slash travelers. <coughs> Excuse me. And I um, ended it there uh, thinking 30 is enough, but um, this is part two uh, to this. And as I said before, this is by no means a complete list of my favorite travelers. There were the ones that came to mind while I was doing this and I just ended at 30. Um, and uh, the, the criteria is ones that I've read about or know uh, about. And there's, I, I bend these rules a little bit uh, uh, because um, I'm talking about read their journals generally. But there's a few here that don't quite fit uh, that and we'll get to them. And the very first one on part two here is that and, and there's another one within here as well. Um, and as I say, this, it's not a complete list. It's ones, it's, there, there's other, uh, explorers that I know about and that I have read, uh, descriptions of, but I've never read their writings. So the key is their writings or their stuff. And we'll get to the stuff, uh, on three of them in this 10. Um, and so there's a lot that I haven't read, that I'm aware of. So those don't get on the list. Uh, there's ones that, um, that never published uh, material in any shape or form, but did explore and, yeah, well we'll, well, we'll get to that. But anyway, this, this is the next 10. And we ended with Hester Stanhope, uh, and that's uh, that's a painting of her on a horse that I used for the uh, the um, the thumbnail. And uh, now uh, we start with David Roberts, and this is the one that you know people say well, he wasn't an explorer. Well, we we'll get to that. Uh, he lived from 1796 to 1864. He was an artist uh, first and foremost, and he traveled all through. Uh, the Middle East, um, Egypt, and just a fabulous painter of ruins. You name it. Dozens and dozens of paintings that uh, would, and almost, I would say almost every one uh, would be worthy of putting up on your wall. Uh, nice prints. Prints of it. Print, not princes, prints. Get this tongue working better. Um, and there's usually captions that go along with these paintings, but I, for the most part, I don't think it was his writing. I think it was somebody else. However, he did keep journals. But it's, and also, as far as I know, they've never been published. Um, they, they sit, they languish in some archive uh, somewhere. Uh, I don't know where. But uh, again, these are things I'm not going into deep. This is from my memory, so I will... Uh, occasionally misspeak some or misremember uh, something uh, for this. All the names will be down at the bottom in the description. And if anybody uh, is interested from my brief descriptions here uh, to search further, then yeah, uh, easily to do. Uh, so yeah, so David Roberts, fabulous. Uh, Frederick Catherwood is next, 1799 to 1854. And he, again, is someone else that, for the most part, is more uh, an architect, um, uh, 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 an artist. And he's, he's mostly known for his travels that uh, uh, he, he, he's on the list. He's just coming up a little bit as well, is John Lloyd Stevens. Uh, but Frederick Catherwood did travel to Egypt and did a lot of uh, paintings. That period, I'm not that familiar with him. I think that was his earliest uh, travels. And then he picked up with uh, uh, John um, Lloyd Stevens to do uh, Mesoamerica. Uh, and I'll get a little more with that. But he used a, an interesting technique. His, his, his drawings and paintings are just meticulously done. And he used, uh, let me see if I get the name correct here in memory, Camera Lucinda, Lucida. I'm not sure, but it's basically you, you, you use a reflection and it's as far as I know, and you put it down on the paper and you, he draws, you know, so it's 
So it's very accurate. You could see you could it, it's sort of like a look, looking at a mirror on the um, the mirror reflection on the paper, and he draws from that. Um, so some people say, "Oh, that was cheating," but it makes beautiful and accurate uh, drawings. Uh, then we move. Oh, sorry. Yeah, did I say date? Seventeen ninety nine to eighteen fifty four. Next is Edward William Lane, 1801 to 1876. Now, I'm slightly cheating here uh, with this one. And I'll, I've read um, his, uh, his uh, uh, description of Egypt, customs of Egypt, uh, or customs of Egyptians, I should say. But uh, he, he was also a translator, a lexographer, and he translated the Thousand and One Nights as well. Uh, along with another person that's that's coming up on this list, uh, who also did the same. Uh, but what was published in 2000 was his description, or was it uh, description of Egypt? Uh, that's from eight, early 1800s, uh, and it was never published before. And the uh, American Universe, uh, American University in Cairo, published it in 2000. I've got a copy of that, and that's I, I I have not read that yet, so so I'm cheating a little bit because that's more his um, his travel uh, thing through, throughout Egypt. But I'm, I'm I'm holding that off until next year uh, for uh, August of Adventures again in August because I will be doing uh, um, nonfiction, and that'll be one of them. Uh, there's a, quite a few big ones I want to get to and reread, uh, but that's that's definitely one. So he's definitely on there for the, for this reason, 1801-1876. Then we get to John Lloyd Stevens, uh, 1805-1852. Now, uh, he and Frederick Catherwood in the 1830s, I think it was, went to Mesoamerica, Mesoamerica and he also uh, sort of, you know, did expeditions for the Panama Railroad as well later. And I'm not sure if Catherwood was part of that or not. Um, I think, I think he was, uh, but yeah, and he, he, it's just his descriptions of the Mayan civilization is, is amazing. And, and along with Catherwood's, uh, paintings and drawings are fabulous. And he also went, he, he, he traveled to Europe as well, like, um, um, uh, Catherwood did, but at different times and Egypt, I think in the Middle East, like all through Europe and, and stuff too. Uh, again, I'm not that familiar with that, um, stuff by him. It's, it's the, it's the Mesoamerican, uh, material, the Mayan, uh, ones that I, that I'm more familiar with for both of them. Uh, let's see. David Livingston is next, 1813 to 1873, uh, uh, Scottish, uh, not a whole lot needs to be talked about him. He, he's well known. Um, there has been fiction. I got a book that I want. I do want to read. It's a. It's a. It's it's sort sort of he's a character in it, but he it's his body. Uh, it's more about the uh, his faithful servants that carried uh, his body back to the coast and uh, have it shipped to uh, England for burial. Um. He's been deconstructed uh, a long time ago. He, you know, uh, he, he was, things that he did was instrumental in in getting rid of uh, slavery eventually, uh, or at least stopping, um, you know, the uh, illegally transportation um, for the British Empire. But there's other issues around him, but it doesn't deter from uh, the sheer... Um, insanity that he might have uh, been uh, to, to do what he did. And I've been thinking, because I do have a number of his, his, his books, and there's still other ones I want to get. And I'll throw this out here as a possibility at some point. I don't know when, and I have to maybe get more material, but um, especially his journal uh, material is to go through and just describe, you know, day by day, do, do some short videos and read little snippets of things that he did that week maybe or uh on a day-to-day -day basis if, if if it does show day-to-day -day, uh things that were happening uh would anybody be interested in that uh, david livingston is uh, uh is definitely in the top few uh favorite explorers of mine so 
And what was pointed out before, uh, which I didn't say, but I'm aware of it, uh, is that there's a, a massive online David Livingston project with all his um, his journals and his writings because when he ran out of paper, he basically, I, like he wrote really tiny, he, he turned the paper on its side and wrote across everything there. So it's a, it's a nightmare to, to decipher, but they are deciphering it and it is going up mostly, I think, on the web. I haven't looked at that site for years, years and years, but... Uh, it is something that's worth looking into. So um, I'm, you just do a uh, Google search and find it. Uh, now we got John Petherick, uh, 1813 to 1882. Um, excuse me, somebody's knocking at the door. Hopefully that's working now again. Sorry about that. Um, um, let my phone here has gone off. Uh, get back to my list here. Uh, yeah, John Petherick, 1813 to 1882. Uh, he was Welsh, and he was in Egypt area. He's, he's part of this, uh, you know, uh, search for the Nile thing, and so, so did Livingston as well. Uh, I'll get to that book in a moment. Uh, but he he did a variety of things. He worked, uh, he, he was searching for coal in various places, so he explored uh, Egypt around. He never, I don't think he ever found, I don't think there was any coal there to be found. Uh, he was a big game hunter at some point uh, in the ivory trade, uh, I think. Uh, and then he then he connected with John Hanning Speak, which uh, I think he's our last one on here. Uh, I believe it is. Yeah, I just make sure here. Uh, yes, uh, John Hanning Speak, uh, which are connected again uh, through these things. And he and he did expeditions with. Uh, ha uh, uh, speak and sort of setting up the whole um, uh, sort of exploration and help getting everything with uh, Burton and everything too. They're all they're, they're all intertwined, and um, I think when he finally published um, a book, uh, the one I read, I can't remember the name of it. I think it's a uh, it's sort of, title is something like Explorations in Central Africa, possibly. Yeah, I think it was. But he also went into a lot of detail, as I remember, about the controversy and the animosity between uh, Burton and Speak. Uh, and yeah, so that so he's he's definitely up there. Uh, 1813 to 1882, which I probably already said. Now we do have Richard Francis Burton now, 1821 to 1890. Uh, he is an interesting uh, character. I, he's one of my favorites as well. He, he wrote everything translated tons and he was a translator a thousand one nights as well uh as a whole bunch of other material he knew dozens of languages uh he traveled uh through the middle east as well and we, uh, i mentioned uh yesterday um what's his name uh, johann ludwig burkhardt and he used his writings uh, as a bit of a uh um a guide because he, he did uh, go into uh, Petra. He he, he uh, re explored Petra uh, and he actually went to on a um, uh, to Mecca uh, purportedly. Uh, he, he did, but he traveled everywhere. Uh, and his big claim is is the uh, the uh, searching for the source of the Nile with John Hanning speak. And this will be a book that I'll be reading this month, uh, River of Gods. It's for, uh, uh, will Sean like it? Well, that's, there's no question here <laughs> whether I'll like it or not. Uh, it's pretty clear. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that, he's he's in there. Um, he was a diplomat in various places. He uh, married a woman who was very strong <laughs> and burnt a lot of his papers after his death. Uh, he had interesting interest he was he was an unabashed atheist um potentially one of the last renaissance men uh he knew a lot and then he, i think he yeah uh, well he, he he was sort of exiled in some ways to central america and he did traveling and exploration there i've never read any of that material uh but it that would be of interest as well uh, so yeah, but let's move on. And then again, somebody else uh, with the uh, Nile connection in Africa. A lot of these are African explorers. You you'll have seen. 
is Samuel Baker, 1821 to 1893. Um, him and his wife, Florence Baker, There's, uh, I'll get to her in a second. There's a very interesting sort of story in connection with it because they actually traveled together. Uh, but he was, he was again, like, I think he was uh, consulate uh, for Egypt, if, I think, if memory serves. And he, 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 he uh, explored uh, and also, too, uh, with uh, uh, looking for the source of the Nile, uh, a number of books he published. Uh, uh, he uh, uh, oh, I lost the train of thought that I was going to say. Uh, oh, yeah, well, he was friends. Like, he knew Burton speak. He, he, like, all these people were sort of, I guess you would say, were in bed together in a sense that they all... They all knew what each other was doing uh, and trying to, you know, outdo the other in many ways. But Florence Baker, his wife, um, she had an interesting because she was an explorer too. She was she was very influential into doing things. She was she she could have been a diplomat uh, from from what I understand uh, of her abilities uh, in in sort of being very diplomatic. Um, as a child, she was born, I think, in Transylv Transylvania, uh, hung. Uh, Hungarian Empire or whatever it was called at the time uh, but as a child she was taking uh, taken by a slave trader and sort of groomed uh, to be part of uh, uh, a harem uh, in in the uh, sort of Middle East area Turkey I think it was and basically Samuel Baker re uh, she was rescued by him and they they married and traveled together I don't think she published anything. If anybody does, I like I say, I haven't done all the research on this, but I would love to know if she did. She did publish something. I know there's books written about her. She's she was an explorer. She was clearly an explorer uh, with equal equal um, you know footing as as Samuel Baker and many of the others. Uh, but I don't think she published anything. There's been biographies about her uh and she shows up in in books that will you know include women occasionally uh there's uh, some of the older ones don't really include the women explorers female explorers which is which is bad uh well too bad but uh you know it, it gets you a sort of a, a skewed look at exploration but no she was she was interesting and i would love to to know more about her uh, then we go to, yeah, the last two here, uh, another one that, that, um, is Francis Frith, 1822 to 1898, uh, a photographer. And he went all through the Middle East. Uh, he traveled everywhere basically, but he, he was an explorer and traveler for the time. And it, his, uh, photographs are great. I do have a collection of his Egypt and I think the Middle East, or maybe it's just Egypt, um. Uh, uh, a book about his photography but he also like he had a whole school of photography or, 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 or um um this is not school is not the right word um uh, followers and sold prints and there were shops uh francis frith shops like you know anywhere in england here you can you can find pictures of his of every any little village anywhere in england he sent people out to do this and in, in, in his style but he did go to, uh, you know, exotic places for the time, which is Egypt and the Middle East. Again, um, his, I don't know how much of his um, descriptions that he wrote himself for the pictures. Uh, and I don't think he ever published anything journal wise. Um, again, there's a good chance that kind of material and letters are languishing in some archive. Uh, now we go. To, we get to John Hanning speak, eighteen twenty-seven tonight. I got nineteen sixty-four. I don't think that's right. It'd be eighteen sixty-four, but I'll check that, and it'll be down in the uh, in in the description. Um, oh, these ten. Um, and yeah, like he he was he was a soldier. Uh, he was sort of more straight laced than Burton. Burton was more of a libertine, I guess you would say. Um, and they clashed uh, personalities right from the beginning, um, and and speaks uh, you know went on to Lake Victoria, uh, which he named, um, and uh, he said he found the source of the Nile. 
uh, Burton was too ill to, to go that last distance. And um, Burton said it wasn't. It turns out it was uh, the source of the Nile. But uh, Speak went back to sort of prove it, but there were still the disputes uh, for this. And they were about to debate uh, this in... in um, um, at the Royal Society and Speak died. He, it is that he committed suicide, possibly, but he was he was a very trained, you know, he, he was a hunter, he was a soldier. It seems a little strange that he would have accidentally shot himself. Uh, or he, well, it, might have been, it might have been an accident, sorry. I mean, per, it's either was purposely, but accidental. Um, so there's questions around it. And this book here, again, go, coming back to it, will be really good. And it also includes... Uh, very little material that's been written about this character, as far as I uh, that I've come across, is uh, Sidi Mubarak Bombay. Uh, he was um, um, oh, he 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 was he was instrumental in in um, this as well in in finding the source of the Nile. So it's really great to have his story in here, and maybe I can follow up more about him. So yeah, so there's um, this. I've got 20 minutes now. I didn't want to go over 15, but there is so many interesting ones. Well, they're all interesting. But anyway, I'll be back tomorrow with part three.